Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of September 23rd, 2021. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumbell and I'd like to thank you for joining us. If you would like to follow along, the agenda for today's meeting is posted on our website. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. Roll call. Adams. Ampri Samuel. Ayala. Barron. Borelli. Brannon. Brooks Powers. Cabrera. Chin. Cornegie. Dharma Diaz. Ruben Diaz. Dinowitz, Present. Drum, Present. Eugene, Present. Felice, Here. Gennaro, Here. Gibson, Jonai, Grodenchik, Holden, Here. Kalos, Ku, Kozlowitz, Lander, Levin, Here. Levine, Lewis, Mizell, Menchaca, Miller, Moya, Perkins, Powers, Here. Reynoso, Riley, Here. Rivera, Rodriguez, Rose, Present. Rosenthal, Here. Salamanca, Present. Traeger, Here. Ulrich, Here. Ballone, Here. Van Bramer, Jaeger, Matteo, Cumbo, Present. Speaker Johnson. Madam Majority Leader, we have a quorum. We have a quorum. Thank you so much. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Father James O'Shea, spiritual leader at the Passionist, which is located at 86-45 Edgerton Boulevard in Jamaica, Queens. So may we pray. Creator of our ever emerging universe, by many names we call upon you. Attend to the needs of each one of us this day as we join together to serve our city. In the midst of all that can attract or distract our energies, we ask that you settle our anxieties and our fears in order that we might be most attentive to the cries of our struggling sisters and brothers and the cries of our suffering earth. May this deep listening lead us to take those actions most in accord with your vision for both a just and compassionate human community as well as a healthy and life-giving planet. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, and I thank you so much for being here today. I would now like to ask Speaker, excuse me, Councilmember Jim Gennaro to spread the invocation onto the record. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. It is an honor and a privilege to tell you about my good friend, Father James O'Shea. Father Jim is currently the provincial of the Passionist Order in the Eastern United States, Canada, Puerto Rico, and other parts of the Caribbean. 
The pastors were founded by St. Paul of the Cross 300 years ago. This year is their tricentennial year. Their mission is rooted in ministry and service to the poor and suffering. They are well known for their missionary work in Haiti, where they care for the sick and the suffering and build and staff medical facilities. When the AIDS crisis first manifested and Haiti, and Haiti was devastated, passionist, miss, passionist missionaries answered the call and cared for those afflicted, and they do so to this day. Father Jim began parish ministry in, in Bedford-Stuyvesant, where he focuses energy on the development of community-based of community organizations, speaking to urgent community needs. In 2002, he became the founding director of Churches United Corporation, which was a coalition of 15 Catholic churches in North Brooklyn that, uh, that successfully advocated for the creation of hundreds of units of affordable housing, including the, the agreement reached in the Brooklyn waterfront rezoning in 2005. Father Jim also led the process from feasibility study to opening of a Cristo Ray Network High School in Brooklyn, serving low-income families. In 2010, Father Jim founded Reconnect Brooklyn with the mission of engaging young people through entrepreneurship, education, and services. He certainly, he, and service. He currently serves as the director of Reconnect. Reconnect offers entry-level development through social enterprise that leads, to the that leads to further employment and education for young men looking for change. This project through social enterprises, which are local businesses that are supported by Reconnect, has employed over 250 young people. Father Jim is now developing his latest project, the Thomas Berry Place in my district in Queens, and that will be a spiritual center which joins social justice and care of the earth. On a personal note, Jim and I have been friends for 30 years. In 1991, on a gray, rainy July day, he performed the wedding ceremony of me to my wife, my late sainted wife, Joanne. Despite the rain, it was an unforgettably beautiful day. With that, I thank James O'Shea for gracing us with his presence today, and I make a motion for unanimous consent to spread the invocation in full upon the record. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Councilmember Gennaro, for your very moving spreading of the invocation, and I thank you so much, Father Shea, for being here today and for sharing your spiritual guidance with us all. We will now move into the adoption of minutes by Councilmember Oswald Feliz. Testing. Thank you. I make a motion to adopt the minutes of the stated meeting held on August 26, 2021, and that the minutes be adopted as printed. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll, thank you. And we will now move into messages and papers from the mayor. Preconsidered M329 Mayor's Management Report. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. Pre-considered M330 through pre-considered M332, various appointments. Rules, privileges, and elections. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. M333 through M338. Coupled on a call-up vote, and I would ask that the clerk take a roll call vote on today's land use call-ups. Again, uh, colleagues, were just voting on land use call-ups. Adams. Aye. Member Adams votes aye. Amprey Samuel. Every Samuel votes aye. Ayala. Aye. Ayala votes aye. Barron. Borelli. Uh, a, motion to, a motion for unanimous consent to vote on all land use and general order items. Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, I will be voting uh, no on M326, preconsidered M330, 331, 332. Intros 1846A, 2271A, 2272A, 2288A, 2289A, 2294A, 2296A, 2298A, 2397A, 2399-2403, and for the benefit of our clerk, I will leave him this paper.
Brannon. Councilmember Brannon votes aye. Brooks Powers. Aye. Brooks Powers votes aye. Cabrera. Aye. Cabrera votes aye. Chin. Aye. Councilmember Chin votes aye. Cornegie. Permission granted. And general orders? Permission granted. Councilmember Cornegie has voted aye on all land use call ups and all general order matters. Dharma Diaz. Ruben Diaz. Dinowitz. Dinowitz votes aye on all. Councilmember Drum. Permission granted. As member Drum votes aye on all. Eugene. Permission granted. As member Eugene votes aye on all land use call ups and general order matters. Felice. Elise votes aye on all. Gennaro. Gibson. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader, with permission, can I vote aye on all land use call items and general order calendar items as well? Permission granted. Thank you so much. I vote aye. Uh, Madam Majority Leader, we, we can't have more people um, continue to uh, vote on everything because we have to keep our quorum here today. So we have to make sure that folks stick around for the entirety of the stated meeting. And just to add to that, Speaker Johnson, if we could clear that uh, with Jason Goldman prior to the actual stated meeting in the future beginning, that would assist us greatly in keeping quorum and making sure that we have the adequate and appropriate votes needed um, for quorum. Councilmember Holden. Uh, I did clear it with Jason. Uh, I vote aye on all land use call-ups, and I make a motion for unanimous consent to vote on all items on the general order calendar. I'm sorry. Um, what do you think? <laughs> Permission granted. Okay. I vote aye on all except uh, pre-considered M330 and Reso and accompanying Reso 1747, of which I vote no. Thank you. Madam Majority, I want to, before Councilmember Holden leaves, I want to uh, congratulate him on a happy anniversary, 48 years with his wife, uh, which is amazing. Uh, so I want to congratulate uh, Bob and Amy on 48 years together. Bob and Amy, happy 48 years. Councilmember Salamanca. Thank you. I vote aye on all land use call-ups, and I make a motion for a unanimous consent to vote aye on all items on the general order calendar. I see no objections. Permission granted. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Jonai. Jonai votes aye. Grodenchik. <laughs> we always love to have you. Grodenchik votes aye. Councilmember Kalos. Councilmember Kalos votes aye. Councilmember Ku. Councilmember Ku votes aye. Councilmember Kozlowitz. Councilmember Kozlowitz votes aye. Lander. Councilmember Lander votes aye. Levin. Councilmember Levin votes aye. Levine. Lewis. Mizell. Yes. Councilmember Mizell votes yes. Councilmember Menchaca. Councilmember Menchaca votes aye. Miller. 
Moya. Aye. Council member Moya votes aye. Perkins. Powers. Aye. Council member Powers votes aye. Reynoso. Riley. Aye. Council member Riley votes aye. Rivera. Aye. Council member Rivera votes aye. Rodriguez. Councilmember Rodriguez votes aye. Rose. Aye. Councilmember Rose votes aye. Rosenthal. Aye. Councilmember Rosenthal votes aye. Traeger. Aye. Councilmember Traeger votes aye. Ulrich. Aye. Councilmember Ulrich votes aye. Councilmember Vallone. Aye. Councilmember Vallone votes aye. Van Bramer. Aye. Councilmember Van Bramer votes aye. Jaeger. Aye. Councilmember Jaeger votes aye. Matteo. Aye. Councilmember Matteo votes aye. Combo. I vote aye. Councilmember Combo votes aye. Gennaro. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye. Today's land, today's land use call ups have a vote of 42 in the affirmative and zero negative. We will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon. Welcome to today's stated meeting. Before we get started, I want to remind uh, all members that masks are required to be worn throughout stated, even when speaking. As we continue to battle this pandemic, let's do our best to protect each other and all New Yorkers. First, I want to acknowledge Hispanic Heritage Month, which began on September 15th and runs until October 15th. This is an opportunity to acknowledge the many contributions of Hispanic leaders, not only in our city, but across the nation. I also want to thank, I also want to wish all those who celebrate the joyous holiday of Sukkot. Uh, and uh, I was lucky enough to be with Councilmember Yeager in the sukkah outside of uh, City Hall uh, earlier today. I want to thank him for arranging that. And I want to uh, say that I hope everyone had a meaningful fast who celebrated for Yom Kippur. Uh, we're really proud of uh, the Jewish community in New York City. Uh, today we're voting on 10 bills to strengthen our city, including six to protect deliveristas. We are the first major city to set minimum standards for this industry, the first, the first in the country. This body is once again making, this body is once again leading the nation and doing the most good for the people who need it the most, and this is no small industry either. They are estimated to be 65,000 delivery workers in New York City. 65,000 delivery workers in our city. At the height of the pandemic, deliveristas risked their lives every day to bring food to our homes so we could stay safe. And sadly, people were not protecting them. But today's package changes that. These bills will give delivery workers the rights they deserve, including the right to use bathrooms and restaurants where they're picking up deliveries. And as always, I'm proud of the council for tackling some of our city's biggest challenges and for standing up for deliveristas. As I do at every stated, I want to acknowledge some 9-11 related deaths that we've seen, sadly. On September 6th, we lost retired firefighter Dennis McLean. He was 71 years old. I also would like to acknowledge those New Yorkers who died on the job. Cool Deep Singh, a 21-year-old ride-sharing driver was killed by a stray bullet in Harlem. He died of his injuries on September 8th. We also mourn the death of delivery worker Noe Amador Liconta, Licona. He died when his scooter collided with a car on September 10th. He was 31 years old. And we also lost Michael Melfi, an iron worker. He died on September 14th. He was 33 years old. I'm also heartbroken by the passing of Doris Deether, who is a longtime community activist in my district, in Margaret Chin's district, in Greenwich Village. She has been a critical part of the fabric of the village and the entire uh, part of Lower Manhattan. Although I'm saddened by her death, I'm hopeful because I know her legacy will live on. Doris was a Community Board Two member since 1964, on the Community Board since 1964 making her one of the longest serving community board members in the city, if not the longest ever serving community board member in the city. And the impact of her activism will endure. She organized with Jane Jacobs, she defeated Robert Moses, and she was a treasure. Doris died on September 16th. 
she was 92 years old. As of September 23rd, 34,122 New Yorkers have died from COVID-19. 34,122 New Yorkers. We are still suffering, but New York is resilient and we will recover. Let us pause for a moment of silence, if people may rise, for those New Yorkers who have died from COVID-19, from 9-11 related illnesses, who have died on the job, and for Doris Dether. Thank you. Before moving on to our agenda, I want to wish the best of luck to Cecilia Mogolansky, a human resource associate who is departing this legislative body. Cecilia worked at the City Council for more than 30 years. She served this city, this council, and its speakers with grace and professionalism. Congratulations, Cecilia and best wishes on your next endeavors. Now, yes, I want to thank Cecilia. Where is she? Is she here? I want to thank her. Now on to our agenda. Today we're considering the following nominees. Simona Kwan to the New York City Board of Health. Uh, Jenny Lowe to the New York City Board of Elections. Julio Medina to the New York City Board of Correction, Herman Merritt to the New York City Civilian Complaint Review Board, and Patricia Marthone to the New York City Health and Hospitals Board of Directors. We're also voting on the following finance items. First, a transparency resolution approving the new designation and changes in the designation of certain organizations to receive funding in the expense budget. Second, we're voting on the Little Italy Restoration Apartments in Councilmember Margaret Chin's district which will receive a partial 40-year Article 11 tax exemption to preserve 152 units of rental housing. The last finance item is Manhattan Beach Housing in Council District 48, which will receive a partial 40-year Article 11 tax exemption to preserve 150 units of affordable rental housing. We'll be, working, we'll be voting on the following land use items. 840 Atlantic Avenue, as modified, will facilitate the development of an 18-story mixed-use building with 320 units, 54 of which will be deeply affordable in Majority Leader Lori Cumbo's district, and also three landmark designations. The New York Public Library, Harlem Branch, and Councilmember Bill Perkins' district, an important civic space for the South Central Harlem community for the past 112 years. The Kim Lau War Memorial in Councilmember Margaret Chin's district is the first New York City landmark that specifically recognizes Chinese American history and culture it pays tribute to Chinese American soldiers who died in action during World War II and has served as an important community monument for nearly, 40, for nearly 60 years. And I, I apologize if I mispronounce this. Akawaksong Manahanong Archaeological Site, a 20-acre site containing the region's best preserved known cultural and archaeological site associated with 8,000 years of occupation by indigenous people in Council Member Joe Borelli's district. Delving into our legislative agenda, we have introduction 2403 from the Committee on Housing and Buildings, sponsored by Councilmember Brad Lander. This bill would temporarily extend the certificate of no harassment pilot created by Local Law 1 of 2018, which is slated to expire on September 27, 2021. The existing pilot would be extended to October 31st, 2021, while the Council works to expand the buildings and neighborhoods covered by a forthcoming multi-year CONH program. Next up, we're voting on introduction number 2397A from the Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing, sponsored by Councilmember Francisco Moya. The bill would require severance pay for hotel service employees in the event of number one, the closure of a hotel to the public, provided the hotel has not, by October 11, 2021, recalled at least 25% of employees and reopen to the public by November 1st, 2021, or two, a mass layoff of at least 75% of employees, employees eligible for severance pay would be owed $500 per week for up to 30 weeks. This requirement would not apply to a hotel that is closed permanently and has or is in the process of converting to alternative use, provided that employees are offered severance of at least 20 days per pay year of service and provided the severance is specifically tied to the conversion. 
The obligation to provide severance would end when an employee is recalled or for a closed hotel when the hotel reopens and the public, to the public and recalls 25% of its employees. This week we are celebrating Climate Week, NYC, an annual initiative focusing on the commitments made by businesses and governments as we battle the climate crisis. Today we're voting on two bills to help us protect the environment as we continue to increase the city's purchasing of environmentally preferable products. Today we're voting on introduction number 2271A, sponsored by Councilmember Ben Kalos from the Committee on Contracts. This legislation will amend the environmentally preferable purchasing laws to update certain standards and improve oversight and accountability in administering them. In 2005, the City Council passed five local laws which together created a multifaceted procurement program to increase the City's purchasing of environmentally preferable products. The bills advanced the City's green procurement practices and authorized the Mayor's Office of Contract Services to exercise authority over the implementation of those practices. Unfortunately, the standards created by those laws have not kept pace with technological developments and there have not been consistent updates to the standards. This bill will clarify definitions of existing environmentally pur preferable purchasing laws, specifically applicability of EPP laws, identifying specific exceptions, updating some codified standards relating to energy consumption, and requiring some new standards for furniture. It will require contracting services to submit a report to the Mayor's Office of Contract Services Director whenever including an EPP specification in a solicitation that would be inconsistent with the agency's ability to procure the highest quality product at the lowest possible price. It will require MOCs director to promulgate rules, directives, and guidance to promote more urgent environmental uh, objectives. It will require the director of MOCs to post on the MOCs website its annual environmental procurement report, which would include a list of solicitations that would include environmentally preferable purchasing, eligible products, and which standards are applicable to such solicitations, any contracts that are not compliant with EPP standards, and a summary of the revisions to EPP standards that have been made during the preceding two years or an explanation of why such updates have not been made if no updates were made. And it requires city agencies to calibrate their office equipment to achieve energy savings. I want to thank from the staff Nick Cannell, Jessica Steinberg Albin, Leah Skripiak, Alex Polinoff, and Wesley Jones. The second bill, again by Council Berkalis, is introduction 2272A. In 2005, again, the Council codified environmentally preferable purchasing. Uh, standards directing city agencies to purchase goods and services that take into account environmental impact. Although conventional textiles leave a significant negative footprint on the environment, and in spite of the availability of superior and innovative alternatives in the emerging marketplace, the city has not implemented EPP laws for textiles, including for uniforms of thousands of city employees. The proposed legislation would address this issue in two stages. First, the city would be required to report on background information about textile purchasing, use and, use and disposable habits of city agencies over the previous four years, and second, a task force would be established made up of industry experts and others to develop and recommend guidelines for environmentally preferable purchasing of textiles. From the staff, I want to thank Nick Cannell, Leah Skripiak, uh, Malek, Nasser Adin, and Wesley Jones. Now on to our groundbreaking deliveristas package, which is composed of six bills from the Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing. The first bill is introduction number 2288A, sponsored by Councilmember Justin Brannan. This bill addresses the practice of food, worker de food delivery workers who often make a low wage being charged by food delivery apps to get an insulated bag. These bags are essential for successfully complete, to successfully complete a food delivery, especially in cold weather, but they can cost $50 or more. This bill will require food delivery apps and couriers like Relay to make available insulated bags to any delivery worker who has completed at least six deliveries for the company. Next, we're voting on introduction number 2296A, sponsored by Councilmember Carlos Menchaca, who has been working on this a long time. I want to congratulate uh, Carlos and Justin and Carlina and the rest of the folks that were involved in this package. Um, his bill will prohibit food delivery apps and couriers from charging delivery workers for the payment of their wages. It would also require the food apps and couriers pay their delivery workers for their work at least once per week. 
This legislation addresses the problem of food delivery apps and couriers like Relay charging delivery workers to receive pay for their work, which can further reduce the often low wage collected by these workers. I was personally appalled when I read the stories of deliveries who sometimes waited hours to be able to relieve themselves because they couldn't use a bathroom uh, during their workday. It's surreal and unacceptable, and we are fixing that problem today with introduction number 2298A, sponsored by Councilmember Carlina Rivera, which will make bathrooms and restaurants more accessible for delivery workers. This bill will mandate that apps include a provision in their contracts with restaurants requiring them to make their bathrooms available for delivery workers when they're picking up an order. The fourth bill in the package deals with gratuity policies for delivery workers who do not always receive the tips that customers leave. Introduction number 1846A, sponsored by Councilmember Margaret Chin, will make the process of providing gratuities to delivery workers more transparent. Additionally, it also ensures food delivery customers in New York City are better informed about whether and how their gratuities are provided to the individual hired to deliver their order. The next bill is introduction number 2289A, sponsored by Councilmember Justin Brannon. Again, his second bill. Deliveristas face risks every single day from extreme weather to robberies and assaults and to traffic violence. This bill offers delivery workers the ability to better control what trips they accept without being unduly pressured by the withholding of a trip offered by the app. Lower wages or negative performance reviews affecting their ability to receive future delivery opportunities. This bill would require food apps and couriers to provide workers with the opportunity to set the following trip parameters. Maximum distance per trip from a location selected by a worker that they will travel, and that such worker will not accept trips over any bridges or tunnels or over particular bridges or tunnels. Apps and couriers would be obligated to allow their delivery workers to change these parameters at any time. Once these parameters are set, the app or courier would be permitted to offer a delivery worker a trip inconsistent with the parameters and could not penalize a delivery worker in any way for selecting or changing their parameters. Apps and couriers would also be required to provide the following information before the worker decides whether to accept the trip, the address where the food, beverage, or other goods must be picked up, the estimated time and distance for the trip, the amount of any gratuity if specified by the consumer, and the amount of compensation to be paid by the food, paid to the food delivery worker, excluding gratuity. In addition, the bill would set forth various definitions, obligations on the consumer and worker protection of the Department of Consumers and Worker Protection, the food delivery apps and the couriers, and enforcement options, including those available to the city and to delivery workers themselves that would apply to all bills related to food delivery workers. And the last bill in this package addresses worker pay. Deliveristas work in incredibly difficult conditions and often make below minimum wage. A study released just last week showed that workers made an average of $7.87 an hour before tips. That is completely unacceptable. Introduction number 2294A, sponsored by Councilmember Brad Lander, will require the Department of Consumer and Worker Protection to conduct a study to determine how much delivery workers must be paid for their work. DCWP would conduct a study of delivery workers' working conditions and would be required to promulgate rules establishing minimum payments for delivery workers by January 1st, 2023. And I want to thank the staff who worked really hard on this entire package of bills. It's been complicated and difficult. Stephanie Jones, Leah Skripiak, and Noah Mexler. That concludes today's legislative agenda. And I now turn it back to you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Speaker Johnson. We will now move into the discussion of general orders. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any members who wish to speak at this time? We have on the general orders calendar, we have council members Chin, Kalos, Lander, and Menchaca. And again, we are speaking now only on the issues related to the discussion of general orders. Thank you. I'm really excited today because there's three items that I have on today's agenda. The first one the speaker talked about, the Little Italy Restoration Apartment, uh, the Article 11 tax exemption that will preserve 150 units of low and moderate income housing 
in the Little Italy neighborhood. What is really great about this is that when a couple of years back, I think some of my colleagues remember that we fought for this Haven Green Senior Housing Project, which is right next door to this building. And that project creates 123 units of low-income senior housing, LGBT-friendly. But what is most important is that it creates, together, a large public open space in the community for the residents and for the neighborhood. I know there's a lot, there was a lot of fight back and lawsuit, but I hope that with this tax exemption will help us speed up the building of the senior housing next door. The other project that I'm very excited about is landmarking of the Kim Lau War Memorial uh, in Chinatown. And I really wanted to thank the Landmark Commission for their support and also the Lieutenant Kim Lau Chinese Memorial Post 1291 of the American Legion in Chinatown. This significant landmark recognized the contribution and the sacrifice of Chinese American during World War II, but it also signified in terms of our history and culture and contribution to this country. And the person who designed this uh, memorial, the architect, Mr. Poi Ji Lee, also was born in Chinatown in 1900. And he was very successful and he designed a lot of uh, building for the Chinese American community. And so this landmark is really very memorable in terms of commemorating also his work. Uh, on the tax exemption early, I really want to thank the finance staff and the land use staff uh, on helping to make it happen, uh, and also with HPD. And finally, I think I'm really proud to be a sponsor of 1846, which is along with a package of bill that support our hardworking delivery worker. Uh, the bill talks about making sure that they get the tips that they deserve because the customers were very generous during COVID and we want to make sure that they get every dime that they deserve. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you, Councilmember Chen. Councilmember Kalos. It's climate week. It's time to take action to save our planet. New York City is the largest city on the planet to declare a climate emergency in a resolution that we've passed two years ago. Now it's time to spend every single dollar from our government to save our planet. When you say show me the money, I'm talking about $18 billion with a B. Council Member Ben Kalos, uh, Chair of the Contracts Committee, this Climate Week, the New York City Council has an opportunity to pass uh, a modernization of environmental pre preferable purchasing. This was first put forward uh, by the City Council back in 2005, sponsored by Council Member uh, Bill de Blasio, co-sponsored by our colleague Jim Gennaro. And funny enough, Mayor de Blasio uh, didn't bother following the very law he wrote. Uh, the bill, the, the program hasn't been updated since 2011. And in this program, we're supposed to be purchasing things like cassette tapes and mini discs. I haven't even seen one of those in a store for years. We're supposed to be buying answering machines. The city can use voicemail. We're going to be banning the purchase of halogen lamps in favors of LEDs like every other household in America. We're adding furniture and we're the fashion capital of the world, so we're gonna be adding textiles. We're adopting the toughest standards where we can save our planet, adopting EPEAT standards for electronics, eliminating reliance on virgin materials, adopting improved outdoor air quality, reducing reliance on hazardous substances, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, reducing the negative effects and generating positive effects for the environment. The legislation will also consider uh, conditions for workers and the ethical sourcing of our textiles. I want to take a moment to thank our legislative counsel, Alex Polinoff, policy analyst, Leah Skripiak, finance analyst Frank Sarno, and finance unit head John Russell. I'd also like to thank the Bill Drafting Division, Deputy Director Wes Jones, and Assistant Deputy Director Malak nasser Dean, Senior Counsel Nick Connell, and Counsel Jessica Steinberg-Alvin. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Kalos. We'll hear from Councilmember Lander, followed by Menchaca. Thank you very much, Madam Majority Leader. It should not have taken us a pandemic or a set of flash floods 
to see the basic humanity of the folks that have been delivering food to us long before this pandemic, that they are workers working out there every single day, simply trying, like others, to put food on the table and pay their rent. And the fact that collectively, not just in New York City, but all across the country, we've allowed a set of multinational billion dollar app corporations, platform corporations, to exploit a loophole uh, in our country's labor laws so that they earn half of our city's minimum wage and don't have any of the basic protections has been appalling. So I am proud to be a part of today's package. And I want to say a special thank you to Council Members Menchaca, Brannon, and Rivera, to the Speaker, to Chair Ayala, uh, to the journalists from the city, uh, Claudia and Josefa, but most especially to the Deliveristas themselves with Los Deliveristas Unidos and the Workers' Justice Project for their organizing to demand that they be seen as workers, as human beings, and give credit to this council for stepping up to provide these protections. My bill intro 2294A will require that they receive minimum per trip payments that make sure they aren't paid $7.80 an hour, but that they take home after taxes and expenses the $15 an hour that we've said every worker in New York City has a right to. Now, I think they should be treated as workers at state or federal uh, level, but until that happens, we have the power to regulate independent work as we did through the Freelancers and Free Act, as we have done for Uber and Lyft drivers who have now brought home over a billion dollars that's in their pockets rather than stuck on the platforms. I'm proud that we're doing that today for the delivery workers. This is their win through organizing, and I'm proud of this council for stepping up to provide supports to them for it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Lander. Councilmember Menchaca. Thank you. Uh, colleagues, I, I rise today with so much pride for this council and its commitment. It only took a year to make this happen. There have been movements that have been going strong for decades before they see action from any body, and it is our body, our city council body, that made this happen. I also want to talk about how I got to learn about these issues. It was during the pandemic after a rally in Sunset Park where workers, bike, bike uh, the Laristas in their bikes came to me and said, there are some stuff that's happening with these apps that you need to look at. And they brought to us the bathroom issue. They brought to us the pay issue. They brought to us the fact that they had to pay to get access to their check. Could you imagine any one of us having to pay to get our paycheck? Uh, and some of us not getting those paychecks for months. Those are the kind of things that brought a sense of dignity and respect that were not happening. What I also want to remind everyone here is that we've actually been working with many of these workers that organized uh, through these packages years ago. This council, not the mayor, this council brought money to day labor organizations across the entire city. It was the day labor organizations that connected to these workers and brought stability and, and connection to government. That's us. We've been building through support and resources uh, community organizing that's been happening. The Worker Justice Project in Sunset Park in Brooklyn were the linchpin to these organizers and the deliveristas. That's the power of this council. This is what makes it so important that we do the work that we do. These are people who cannot vote for us to come and, and, and la uh, launch legislation for them. They are disconnected, but they have a relationship with us, and that is the power of our relationship with them. Thank you so much. 2296 uh, will remove any required payment for their pay and make it happen on a weekly basis. That's going to transform their lives, their families, and the future because they're not done. This is just phase one. Thank you so much to Speaker who made this happen and all the staff. Thank you. Thank you so much. I see no other members wishing to speak at this time. So we will now move into report, report of special committees. No, <clears throat> excuse me, none. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing, intro 1846A through intro 2298A on page four, food delivery workers. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 2397A, hotel service employees. Amended and coupled on general orders with a message of necessity. Pre-considered intro 2399, food delivery workers. Coupled on general orders with a message of necessity. Report of the Committee on Contracts, intros 2271A and 2272A, environmentally preferable purchasing. 
Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, pre-considered Reso 1739, Transparency Reso. Coupled on general orders. Pre-considered LU 845 and Reso 1740 and pre-considered LU 846 and Reso 1741, Tax Exemptions. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Housing and Buildings, pre-considered Intro 2403, Certification of No Harassment Pilot. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 826 and 827, 840 Atlantic Avenue Rezoning. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Plan Commission pursuant to section 197D of the New York City Charter. <clears throat> Excuse me, LU 829 and Reso 1742 through LU 831 and Reso 1744 landmark designations. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Rules, Privileges and Elections, M326 and Reso 1745 approving the appointment of Dr. Simona Chung Kwan, Board of Health. Couple of general orders. M327 and Reso 1746 approving the appointment of Jenny Lowe, New York County Commissioner of Elections. Couple of general orders. Preconsidered M330 and Reso 1747 approving the appointment of Julio Mendina, Board of Correction. Couple of general orders. Preconsidered M331 and Reso 1748 approving the appointment of Herman Merritt, Civilian Complaint Review Board. Couple of general orders. Preconsidered M332 and Reso 1749 approving the appointment of Patricia Marthone, Health and Hospitals Board of Directors. Couple of general orders. On the general orders calendar, LU 826 and Reso 1750 and LU 827 and Reso 1751, 840 Atlantic Avenue rezoning. Couple of general orders, and at this time, I'm asked the clerk to take a roll call vote on all of the items coupled on today's general orders calendar. Adams. I just wanted to congratulate Los Deliveristas Unidos on your victory today and to all of my colleagues on this amazing legislation to help the delivery workers of New York City. With that, I enthusiastically vote aye on all. Thank you. Ampri Samuel. Aye. Ampri Samuel votes aye. Ayala. Aye. Ayala votes aye. Barron. Brannon. And Brannon votes aye. Brooks Powers. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. I would like to express my support for Jenny Lowe's appointment to the City Board of Elections and Herman Merritt's appointment to the City Civilian Complaint Review Board. I know that both of them will bring integrity and sound judgment to the new roles that ha they have been nominated for. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Cabrera. Aye. Cabrera votes aye. Chin. Aye. Chin votes aye on all. Dharma Diaz. Aye. Dharma Diaz votes aye on all. Ruben Diaz. Sí Ruben Diaz votes si and todo. Dinowitz. Dinowitz votes aye on all. Feliz. Aye. Feliz votes aye. Gennaro. Madam Majority Leader, uh, before I vote, I request unanimous consent to vote on the land use call-ups. Seeing no objection, then the motion passes. And I vote yes, and I vote yes on all, on all the items on the calendar. Thank you. Jonai. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. I abstain on M330, Resolution 1747, and after consultation with Jason Goldman, I am a strong yes on intro 2397A. Very, <clears throat> very strong yes. <laughs> Thank you. Gordenchik. Councilmember Gordenchik votes. I, uh, Kalos. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. I uh, took the opportunity to uh, meet with Jenny Lowe, the applicant for the Board of Election. In our conversation, she agreed that long lines are a problem at the Board of Elections and that she had to wait online herself, that we need to fix these broken machines, make it easier to register to vote. 
uh, for, particularly for those facing language barriers, and ensure that absentee voting works. Uh, we talked about expanding the number of early and election day voting sites to reduce long lines, uh, making sure that we register as many people and with the new constitutional amendment, reduce that number from 25 to 10 to zero in election day registration if possible. Uh, we talked about the fact that this council passed a law for online voter registration that the state still continues to block, but as soon as it is allowed, she will be implementing it. Uh, we talked about making sure that there's quality control and training to prevent future mishaps that might add 100,000 votes to an election. Uh, she believes in a belt and suspenders for voting and believes in paper ballots. Uh, she'll work with local elected officials to hire poll workers and translators for additional language not served, such as Russian or Urdu and dialects within the specific language groups. Uh, there are a number of commitments she made, and for those reasons, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Ku. Councilmember Ku votes aye. Kozlowitz. Kozlowitz votes aye on all. Lander. Councilmember Lander votes aye on all. Levin. Levine. Lewis. Mizell. Yes. Councilmember Mizell votes yes. Menchaca. Councilmember Menchaca votes aye on all. Miller. Moya. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, we all know how challenging this pandemic uh, and our path to recovery has been. Uh, and it's been even more challenging for workers in the hospitality industry who are part of the hotel workforce. These workers have been in the hardest hit, uh, in the hardest hit areas uh, by COVID. They represent our immigrant, Latino, Asian, and black communities. This bill, intro 2397, creates an opportunity to those uh, to put thousands back to work and provide a much needed economic lifeline to those struggling to make ends meet. It also creates an opportunity to incentivize and revitalize uh, New York City's hotel industry. These workers are not only the backbone of New York City's uh, tourism economy, they are ambassadors to our great city. We cannot leave them and their families behind. Uh, so I thank all of you, my colleagues, in joining me in voting uh, yes to pass intro 2397. We have an opportunity to pr protect workers uh, and their families and mobilize our local economy. Thank you. And Madam Majority Leader, uh, I will be voting aye. Thank you. Perkins. Powers. Aye. Councilmember Powers votes aye. Reynoso. Riley. Councilmember Riley votes aye on all. Rivera. Thank you so much. I must disclose for the council record that the NYPD is being funded in today's transparency resolution and my mother is an NYPD civilian employee for the past 41 years. Madam Majority Leader, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. For nearly two years while New York City battled the COVID-19 pandemic and fought for a just recovery, delivery workers have put their lives and livelihoods at risk to keep New Yorkers fed and our beloved restaurants afloat. Delivery workers are vital to our city's survival, survival, but the third party apps that employ them and many of the restaurants that rely on their services have historically not treated them with the respect that they so rightfully deserve. We know many deliveristas work for at least 12 hours a day, seven days a week with a median hourly pay less than half of minimum wage. New York City, is capable of far greater for our essential workers than what the Liberistas receive. Our responsibility as a council is clear, and if the growth of this movement is any evidence, the entire city knows it too. The Liberistas deserve basic human dignity in doing their essential work, and that's exactly why we have been fighting to pass this package of legislation and why we are here today to make history. 
It's a testament to the fierce organizing power and determination of our city's delivery workers. So I want to thank the Workers' Justice Project, Los Deliberistas Unidos, of course, all of my colleagues who have spoke today. And I want to thank all of you for voting aye on these bills. Finally, this fight does not start in the council, nor does it end here. Our work continues, and I call on our city agencies to step up and do their part to ensure deliveristas are regarded with dignity and respect and provide a safe, supportive environment to work. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, to the mayor, Jay, to, to a lot of you who were instrumental in getting this done. New York City thanks you. We are better for it. I vote aye. Thank you. Levin. Councilmember Levin votes aye on all. Rodriguez. Aye. Councilmember Rodriguez votes aye. Councilmember Rose. Aye. Councilmember Rose votes aye. Rosenthal. Permission granted. Okay, thank you. I want to disclose for the record uh, that I was formerly a board member of the Alliance Against Sexual Assault, should there be any funding for that in this transparency resolution. Um, I want to concur with uh, Council Member Brooks Powers that it's just so terrific that we're able to put two especially qualified people, Jenny Lowe and Herman, Herman Merritt, onto these boards. They are amazing public servants, and we're very lucky to have them. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Traeger. Aye. Council Member Traeger votes aye. Ulrich. I vote aye on all with the exception of Reso 1747 and accompanying um, M330. I vote no one knows but aye on all others. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Valone. Councilmember Valone votes aye on all. Van Bramer. Councilmember Van Bramer votes aye on all. Councilmember Yeager. Hang on, council member, please. One moment. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I on all with the exception of, are you ready? Okay, 1846, 2288, 2289, 2294, 2397, 2399, 2272, and I abstain on M330, Reso 1747. I'm not going to expand my remarks except to state for the record that earlier this morning at the uh, committee, I explained why I was going to be voting no on the uh, matters that came out of the Consumer Affairs Committee. And for those who reviewed this transcript later, like the courts, I refer you to those remarks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman. Matteo. I'm voting no on 2271, 2272, 2397, pre-considered 2403, 1846, 2288, 2289, 2294, 2296, 2298, 2399, M332, M326, M330, M331, M332, 332 m and accompanying resolutions, and I on what's left. Thank you. Council Member Cumbo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye.
All items on today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote of 43 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions. With the exception of intro 1846A, which was adopted by a vote of 40 in the affirmative, three negative, and zero abstentions. And intro 2271A, which was adopted by a vote of 41 in the affirmative, two negative, and zero abstentions. And intro 2272A, which was adopted by a vote of 40 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions. Three negative, my apologies. Intro 220, excuse me, intro 2272A, which was adopted by a vote of 40 in the affirmative, three negative, and zero abstentions. Intro 2288A, which was adopted by a vote of 40 in the affirmative, three negative and zero abstentions. Intro 2289A, which was adopted by a vote of 40 in the affirmative, three negative and zero abstentions. Intro 2294A, which was adopted by a vote of 40 in the affirmative, three negative and zero abstentions. Intro 2296A, which was adopted by a vote of 41 in the affirmative, two negative and zero abstentions. Intro 2298A, which was adopted by a vote of 41 in the affirmative, two negative, and zero abstentions. Intro 2397A, which was adopted by a vote of 40 in the affirmative, three negative, and zero abstentions. Intro 2399, which was adopted by a vote of 40 in the affirmative, three negative, and zero abstentions. Intro 2403, which was adopted by a vote of 41 in the affirmative, two negative, and zero abstentions. M326 and Resolution 1745, which was adopted by a vote of 41 in the affirmative, two negative and zero abstentions. M30 and Reso 1747, which was adopted by a vote of 37 in the affirmative, four negative and two abstentions. M331 and Resolution 1748, which was adopted by a vote of 41 in the affirmative, two negative and zero abstentions and M332 and Resolution 1749, which was adopted by a vote of 41 in the affirmative, two negative and zero abstentions. And the revised land use call up vote is 43 in the affirmative and zero negative. We will now go into the introduction and reading of bills. All bills have been referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. Thank you. There are no resolutions on today's calendar, so we will now move into general discussion. We have on the agenda Councilmember Brooks Powers. Thank you. I just wanted to be on the record to convey my outrage at the images we have seen out of Texas this week where federal border agents on horseback chase Haitian migrants, attempting to corral them and brandishing whips and ropes against defenseless people. Many of the Haitian immigrants are seeking refuge in the wake of the devastating earthquake that hit Haiti last month and are turning to America for help in a time of desperate need. It is inhumane and unacceptable that our government has responded in this manner. Unfortunately, these images of U.S. agents inflicting violence on people of color are painfully familiar, evocative of the memory of chattel slavery. Our nation's legacy of racial violence is still alive and well today. We are a nation of immigrants, and this cannot be how we greet immigrants when they seek asylum at our borders. We lead the free world, but we cannot lead by this example. I condemn these actions as a betrayal of our values and an affront to the people of Haiti. I also share and send my um, well wishes to our colleague, Councilmember Farrell Lewis, who has traveled to um, the borders um, pertaining to this crisis. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Brooks Powers. We will now go to Councilmember Steve Levin. Thank you very much, Madam Majority Leader. I just want to uh, call my colleagues' attention to um, a bill that I am 
proud to introduce today with Councilmember Debbie Rose, the chair of the Youth Services Committee, um, which would, uh, which would um, allow youth that have been in an RHY shelter, or runaway homeless youth shelter, which is run by DYCD, to have that time count towards the time that they need to be in shelter in order to qualify for a housing voucher, otherwise known as a city theft voucher. Under, currently, what happens is a child, a young person, um, when they age out of an RHY shelter, has to actually go into a DHS-run shelter for 90 days in order to qualify for a city theft voucher. That's inhumane. It makes no sense. It's, it, it is, uh, it's, it's a, a backwards policy. And um, the city was supposed to um, change that uh, a couple years ago. And they haven't. They've uh, recently instituted a pilot program. Um, that's not sufficient. And so um, uh, I'm, I'm glad to be working um, with, with Debbie uh, on this legislation so that um, no young person has to actually go into the shelter system to the Department of Homeless Services shelter system um, after they've been in an RHY shelter um, in order to uh, have access to permanent housing. So hopefully uh, I can get everybody to sign on to intro 2406 and we can get this, this bill passed. Um, I'm sorry, 2405, excuse me, 2405. Um, and we get this bill passed uh, before the end of the year. Um, I'm also actually glad to be uh, introducing 2406 with Councilmember Helen Rosenthal, and this will be require the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene to report on hospital treatment and programs uh, for sexual assault survivors. So um, if my colleagues could sign on to those two bills, um, I know it's late in the session, but uh, the important issues that we should be addressing before we leave this term. Thank you. Thank you, seeing as there are no other members, I wanna join with Council Member Brooks Powers um, and also sharing in my devastation of what we've all seen in terms of the dynamics that are happening in Haiti and abroad. As many of you know, they have been hit by a 7.2 earthquake with over 2,189 people being killed on top of a tropical storm, as well as the assassination of its president, as well as the first lady also being shot. They are also dealing with the ramifications of COVID-19. And in addition to that, many people don't really understand what Haiti is dealing with. In 2010, the earthquake there killed over 200,000 people. If you can just imagine the size of a country like Haiti still dealing with the ramifications of 200,000 people being killed. And on top of that, now as migrants, are leaving other countries and coming into America as we have seen the horrific images that bring back the days of slavery and what we have all seen in terms of border patrol in Texas with lassos and whips, further abusing a people that have already received the worst treatment in the entire world, who are dealing with the ramifications of death, of destruction, gangs, warfare, robbery, and a corrupt system that has never allowed them to fully recover. As we are now dealing with and welcoming in New York City the UN General Assembly, I am calling personally on President Biden as well as Vice President Kamala Harris to address the atrocities in Haiti, how it has been handled, how we have repeatedly uh, disrespected and turned away our Haitian brothers and sisters, we voted in the last election cycle as black people for this particular administration after what we saw in the Trump administration with our Latino brothers and sisters being held in cages. We did not vote in this way to see an exchange of our Haitian brothers and sisters being whipped and turned away at a border. And so as the UN General Assembly is here, it is important that we raise our voices and our energy to make sure that this is the topic of discussion of the United Nations. I cannot understand as to how this issue has not been addressed appropriately and adequately. And I, along with many of my colleagues, will continue to raise this because this is the most inhumane treatment that I have seen from the United States. Um, it, 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 it's just unfathomable to see our brothers and sisters getting whipped and chained um, 
when they are actually looking for help, resources, assistance, and a helping hand, many of them are being deported back to a country that cannot receive these migrants, our people, with all of the death and destruction that they have currently received. So I encourage all of my brothers and sisters to continue to raise our voices, because if this can happen to our brothers and sisters in Haiti, it certainly can happen anywhere. And with that, I close today's stated meeting, and I turn it back over to Speaker Corey Johnson. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader, for those important and powerful words. The stated meeting of September 23rd, 2021 is hereby adjourned. <laughs>